Hi guys, today I'm going to review my recent trip with Megabus. I'm going to talk about the routes, punctuality, bus interior, amenities including washroom, ticket price, how to buy tickets and book seats, boarding process, and my overall experience with Megabus. And I'm also going to share with you some useful tips for how you can make your trip as enjoyable as possible. So let's start. Megabus in Canada covers the provinces Ontario and Quebec with terminals among others at Montreal, Kingston, Toronto Union Station, Toronto Airport, Mississauga, Niagara Falls, and many other cities. Take a look at their website to check out other routes and stops. My trip was from Montreal to Kingston and this is right across the bus terminal in Montreal. We were scheduled to depart at 10 a.m. and arrive at 1.05 in Kingston. And surprisingly, the bus departed on time and also arrived on time, give or take a few minutes. I can't say if they're always this punctual as I've only taken the mega bus once, but if they're always this punctual, then that's definitely a big plus. Connected to this trip, I took the Via Rail from Toronto to Montreal, which was one hour late, and then the Via Rail again from Kingston to Toronto, which was also an hour late. And by the way, if you're thinking about whether to take the Mega Bus or Via Rail for your next trip, you can watch this video up here after watching this video. Let's talk about boarding now. This is the Mega Bus bus terminal in downtown Montreal near the train station. We arrived pretty close to departure time, which was 10 a.m., but since we still had some time left, we decided to take a quick peek at the Megabus office and waiting area. Nothing special here but good enough to keep you warm in the winter while waiting or shaded from the sun in the summer. There's a customer service counter in the corner and there's even a small charging station to charge your electronics. We were actually also looking for a washroom to use before we departed but unfortunately the only washroom there was out of order. And then when it was time to board the bus, we boarded the bus in random order and the staff at the bus entrance checked our tickets on our phones and overall the boarding process was very smooth. And by the way, a tip here, save your ticket as PDF to your phone or as a screenshot in your favorites or in your Apple wallet to make boarding faster. And here we're already in our seats upstairs and watching other people board. In case you're wondering about luggage, each person is allowed one piece of luggage that they will store for you plus one carry-on bag. And if you want to know more details about the luggage dimensions and weight, then make sure that you check out their website. We were seated on the upper deck and unfortunately I didn't get a chance to take pictures or footage of the lower deck but in any case the lower deck felt very stuffy and small and cramped so I would always prefer to sit on the upper deck. Here it feels quite spacious, you see that there are large windows here and there's also an emergency exit. I was not impressed with the seats and the interior overall. I mean, don't get me wrong, the seats were really clean, but they felt a bit sticky. It could be because of the material of the seats and overall it just looked a bit tacky design-wise. I'm not sure if it's different with Megabuses in the US, I've never taken them before because on their website they refer to their Megabuses as our luxury double-deckers. That's definitely not the case for the Megabuses in Canada. The amenities are pretty basic. Megabuses have onboard restrooms, power outlets, and three-point seat belts. So restroom or washroom in Canada was really really lacking. I don't even know where to start talking about it. There is no real flush but instead there's just a kind of a blue liquid in the toilet and there's also no running water in the washroom. So here I get to my second tip which is make sure that you use the restroom before you board the bus. Megabus promises that they will make stops on longer trips but this trip was only around two hours so they didn't make a stop in between. Let's talk about how to buy tickets, pricing, and then seat reservation. You can buy your tickets on the Megabus Canada website and it's advisable to buy your tickets as early as possible so you can secure yourself the cheapest prices. And according to Megabus, you can make a reservation as early as 45 days in advance of departure. But certainly, I would not book too early because the thing is that Megabus reservations cannot be cancelled or refunded. They can only be traded in for another journey up to 3 hours before your original scheduled departure. So let's look at an example of a ticket purchase. Let's say that you want to make a trip from Toronto Union Station to Montreal. So if you were to buy a ticket today for today and you go to find tickets, then you would find that the tickets that are available are priced between $69.99 to $79.99. That is the cheapest that you can get. 
But if you were to book a ticket far in advance, let's say you would buy a ticket for July 18th, a one-way ticket, and you go to find tickets, then you would still find tickets for the price of $59.99, which is cheaper. So I'm adding this one-way ticket to my basket, and let's go on to the seat reservation. So here you can see the seats for the lower decks as well as for the upper deck seats. So one advantage that the lower deck seats do have is that there is an option to select seats where there is a table in the middle. So if you're a group of four, you can all sit around the same table. The three of us sat on the upper deck right behind these two seats with the numbers three and four here. And if you look at our ticket, our seats were numbers nine, 10 and 13 for three travelers. So here on the seating chart, it would be number one, two, three, four, five, six, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So we got these here, 9, 10, and 13. In this case, 9 and 10 are already sold out. But we really love these seats because as you can see, in front of these two seats here are the stairs. So that means that you have some space in between where you're sitting and the seats in front of you. And also from where we sat here, we got a really nice view at the scenery. But I think that even better would be these seats in front here, number one, two, three, four, which by the way, cost $10 they are called panoramic seats and from here of course you can enjoy a full unobstructed view and see everything because we were sitting over here and there were still seats in front of us the view was slightly blocked but it was still okay i couldn't retrieve the price for the seat reservation from my ticket but i believe that each of these seats here number nine and ten cost seven dollars each these other seats here cost four dollars each and all the seats behind here are noted as general seating where there's no additional fee and it's just on first come first serve basis so as the panoramic seats are still available let's just say that i want to get this seat here so i'll click on this one which is ten dollars quite expensive i would say i'll go to continue and here you can see my total $59.99 plus $10 plus a booking fee. Remember, there's a booking fee of $4 plus HSD, which is $9.62. So the total I have to pay is $83.60. And here you can also select to get travel updates by text, but you will have to pay a fee of 25 cents. And after you completed the purchase, you will get an email from Megabus with the details of your reservation and an attached PDF, which is your ticket. And as for the trip itself, I think the ride was pretty great and we were able to enjoy the view. And the bus driver did a really decent job. I must say the ride was smooth and not bumpy and really steady. So would I take the mega bus again? I think for short trips, perhaps yes, because as I told you before, the mega bus was on time. We arrived at Kingston at about one plus. But for longer trips, anything above two or three hours, I'm not as sure because I just think the seats weren't as comfortable and the washroom was also really crappy. And of course, the longer the trip, the larger the possibility for a delay. And here we arrived at Kingston where we stayed for one night. And by the way, we really enjoyed Kingston and we really love the city. And more videos on Kingston as well as Montreal will be coming up on this channel. So if you don't want to miss out on these videos, then make sure that you subscribe to my channel Living in Canada. And very important, make sure that you set the notification bell to all notifications. Thanks so much for watching guys and have an awesome day and see you next time.